It's 1300 and Birmingham is a bustling town. This tour will take you on a journey through the marketplace and the streets that surrounded it, the very heart of the medieval town. New research together with archaeological evidence has given us a unique and unprecedented opportunity to create an accurate depiction of the town's medieval character. This is Edgbaston Street, which still exists today. In 1300, this is where the tanning pits were located. Tanning was one of Birmingham's earliest and most important industries. Tanners use animal skins to make leather, an essential material in the Middle Ages used for making all sorts of goods, not just belts and shoes, but jugs and drinking vessels too. You can see a tanner here stretching the skins, one of the final stages in leather making. But before he reached this stage, the skins would have been soaked in a mixture of urine and feces, amongst other things, making this by far the smelliest trade in town. The medieval market was established in 1166 and took place every week outside St. Martin's Church. The market was the lifeblood of the town, bringing the whole community together. Here you could buy food, pottery, cloth and metal goods, but people didn't just come here to shop. It was a place to meet your neighbours, to catch up on all the gossip and enjoy a spot of entertainment. Look at the stilt walker here, keeping the crowds amused while they haggle for a good bargain. St Martin's Church was perhaps the most important place in medieval Birmingham and was located in the centre of the town. Death was a constant companion. Everyone was susceptible to disease and infection which could strike at any moment. Care for your soul and preparation for a righteous death were important considerations. Here you can see the rector of St. Martin's saying a funeral mass for one of the townspeople. Very good price, young lady. In 1300, Birmingham was a very successful market town. Here, to make the most of this prosperity, the lord of the manor is building more roads and houses in his deer park to attract even more people. This part of the park became known as Park Street, another road that still exists today. Birmingham has always been a hive of industry. Even in the Middle Ages, people's backyards were places of hectic activity. Here you can see more tanning pits and, out on the edge of town, another important industry, pottery making. The wooden houses of the medieval town were at great risk from the dangers of fire. So the kilns used to make the pottery were purposely built at a safe distance from the centre. Now we move to the house of Roger Le Moul. He was the richest merchant in town and his courtyard house demonstrated his wealth and status. We're not quite sure how he made his money, but there's a good chance he was a cloth merchant. And because of his importance in Birmingham, this street was named after him and became eventually known as Moore Street. Thank you, kind sir. Everybody today knows the Bullring as Birmingham's main shopping centre. But in 1300, it was something very different. Back then, it was a livestock market where people would bring cattle to sell. Bulls were kept in rings or pens. And on busy market days, animals would have been kept in pens on all of the available land between St. Martin's Church and the Manor House, turning the town centre into a mud bath. This is the biggest house in town and belongs to William de Birmingham, Lord of the Manor. You can tell he's a wealthy man because he has a moat around his manor house, a sign of great status after all. 
You had to pay a lot of men to dig it, which didn't come cheap. Although the house is long gone, the name lives on as Moat Lane, just by Birmingham's wholesale markets. The manor house looks a little bit like St Martin's Church, and that's because it's built from the same red sandstone. Only very important buildings like churches and manor houses were made from stone in 1300. And notice how the outer farm buildings, which were lower status, are wooden, just like the rest of the homes in the town. Here, you can see the town's mill, where the people would have paid to have their corn ground into flour. Yet another source of income for the lord of the manor. So thank you for joining us on our tour of medieval Birmingham. Remember that you can see the model interactive on display at Birmingham Museum and Art Gallery in the exhibition Birmingham, Its People, Its History. We look forward to seeing you very soon.